Good afternoon, everybody. This is a live extreme weather briefing discussing the southern U.S. snowstorm that's about to impact portions of the southern Appalachians, especially western North Carolina, including the Asheville area. This is a uh, spread of these winter storm warnings, and the winter storm warning has been added for the Asheville area for three to five inches of snow. Locally higher amounts, uh, though, are definitely possible on the eastern and southern facing slopes uh, with this system. Uh, that's where they're, you're going to have a little bit of orographic lift, and that could squeeze out uh, some more of that snowfall as well. It looks like the uh, heaviest snow is going to fall tonight through early tomorrow morning across these mountain regions. Uh, areas off to the east could also get some snow, but probably not uh, east of the warning area until tomorrow uh, afternoon after an erosion of that warm layer. Charlotte looks like it's going to have a warm nose that's going to dominate uh, much of the, uh, the area there until about middle of the uh, afternoon at about 2 p.m. That's when that warm nose could erode. A coastal storm then is going to lift up the northeast coast and then eventually off the coast. Uh, and out to sea. Uh, but as that happens, it's going to pull in a lot of that cold air. Uh, so far this morning, uh, the bird bath was frozen over uh, here to the north of Greenville, uh, South Carolina. I'm uh, at my mom's place up and about uh, somewhere up in this region to the north of uh, Greenville. And I was wondering if they were going to extend these warnings a little bit further south, just in to South Carolina across that higher terrain. There are some pretty big mountains up there. You may remember some of that footage that we shot near Pretty Place, South Carolina. That was drone footage before the snow fell. I'm also going to shoot some drone footage after that snow and then show you some before and after shots. Uh, but also look at those warnings back into northern Georgia as well, into the mountains of northern Georgia, uh, expecting uh, about two to four inches of snow up there. Uh, maybe some light glaze as well. But this is the same system that had the severe weather threat yesterday across eastern Texas. And my plan uh, this evening is to head up to the mountains west of Asheville. I'm going to meet up with the Radar Omega team. We're going to fix my live streaming data for the top of Dominator 4. And then I'm going to cover uh, this snowstorm uh, from the mountains to the west of Asheville, through Asheville. And that will probably drop down to Pretty Place uh, by tomorrow morning to show you some of those scenic sights uh, tomorrow morning of that snowfall. But now let's break down some of these snow maps. And uh, this is from the Pivotal Weather website. This is the three kilometer NAM here. The three kilometer NAM actually shows about three or four inches of snow, even down here at my mom's place, just to the north of Greenville. And you can see here right along the South Carolina, North Carolina border, it quickly jumps up to even double digit snowfall totals. The winter storm warning right now only includes the westernmost county of South Carolina, but you can see the three kilometer NAM has Asheville just getting pasted here uh, by even up to double digit snowfall totals in spots on those eastern and southern facing slopes. Uh, but it does look like there is going to be a little bit of a warm nose that's going to whip into there that could hold down some of those uh, snowfall totals as well. But let's break down now uh, the progression of this system uh, from today through tomorrow. We can zoom out a bit here, look at the uh, responsible Vortmax. Digging way down to the south, and it looks like there could be another system, too, coming up here in the southern stream Sunday night into Monday. But here you can see this system. It's got a lot of flow still on the backside. Uh, there are some special weather statements, uh, special marine warnings this morning near the Panama City Beach area. Maybe a chance of some water spouts there, but mainly uh, those gusty winds are going to be happening. But there you can see that compact Vortmax there. Pretty intense uh, Vortmax as well. Let me zoom in just a little on this radar or on this on these models here. This is a three kilometer NAM, 500 millibar winds here at the mid levels of the atmosphere. And you can see that the shape of this upper level system certainly does favor quite a bit of vorticity of action downstream of it. That's where the precipitation is going to begin tonight over the mountains. 7 p.m. and on is when those winter storm warnings uh, are in effect. So I'm going to get up into position this evening to cover that. And usually the heaviest snow would be right along or just to the north of the 500 millibar vort, even as it passes over the mountains here. Downstream of it, though, you can see that there is some vorticity evection, even though this is a relatively closed uh, upper level low here at 500 millibars. Uh, there likely is some flow here downstream of it across those high, uh, vorticity contours, uh, leading to some vorticity advection downstream. There is going to be quite a bit of lift also in the mid-levels of the atmosphere, a lot of moisture in the mid-levels. This is at 3Z tonight. Uh, so this is likely when the snow is definitely going to begin. Here you can see the Vortmax over northern Alabama uh, by 3Z uh, tonight. Uh, it's about 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, this evening. That's when the snowfall is really going to be ramping up this evening. We could even see some thunder snow as well 
uh, when that cold vort uh, passes uh, through in the middle of the night to the early morning hours tomorrow. Uh, but you can see quite a bit of vorticity convection downstream. Here's the main vort over northern Alabama as we're getting closer to the midnight hour. And then that vort is heading right toward the winter storm warning area. That's the path of that cold blob of air aloft. And you can see the three kilometer NAM takes that 500 millibar vort right over the corner, upstate corner of uh, South Carolina. The heaviest snow would likely be very near that vort, just on the north side of it. Uh, and the higher terrain of the southern Appalachians happen to correspond uh, with the very north side of that 500 millibar vort passing right over the Greenville, South Carolina area. And then the surface low is going to happen, and this is going to be a coastal low here that's going to get going. Uh, about down to the upper 990s there off the coastline of eastern North Carolina. This is by 18Z tomorrow, so about the middle of the day by Friday. And then uh, on the back side of that system, you start to get the cold air uh, pulled southward. And uh, right uh, at this time, the three-kilometer NAM has the surface temperatures just a little bit above freezing in the uh, Charlotte area. But once the cold air advection gets going on the back side of that system, it should erode this warm nose just a bit. Here you can see the warm nose above freezing, just above the ground. This is at about noon, and uh, you can see quite a bit of uh, uh, cold air advection here uh, below that. Uh, northerly winds below that warm nose. Then you got the warm air advection in the vicinity of the warm nose uh, there. And then uh, surface temperatures just a little bit above freezing, but you're probably going to be talking about a sleet. Uh, type of a deal freezing rain a little bit of light freezing rain and then once this warm nose gets eroded with time in the charlotte area it should change over to snow there as well by the early afternoon hours but there's not a lot of moisture on the back side of this system and it's going to be getting out of uh getting out of the area pretty quickly this is at 4 p.m eastern time here in charlotte and by about that time, notice how the warm nose is gone. Uh, in the mountains, it's going to be all snow the whole entire time. And the adjacent Piedmont, uh, they're right up against the mountains and the mountains uh, east of the uh, eastern continental divide. But out here, well east of the mountains, that warm nose does bring that profile above freezing. That's going to change that precipit. That's going to keep that precipitation as a mix. But then once we erode this warm nose at about 3 or 4 p.m. eastern time, then it's going to change quickly over to snow. And there could be a period of uh, of some snow there on the back side. See the three kilometer NAM still has plenty of precipitation dominating western North Carolina, falling as snow after that changeover at about three o'clock or so. Here you can see the coastal low just off the uh, North Carolina outer banks by this time on 21Z. Some icing could uh, move into north central North Carolina and eventually up toward the Danville area as well there and. Uh, southern virginia but my plan is to head out at about just after dinner and uh, i'm going to head up to the mountains of north carolina to try to bullseye this snowstorm get some of those double digit snowfall totals some of the beautiful southern appalachians terrain as well we're going to be chasing in dominator four uh, with this event but you can see the snow is still coming down even through evening through zero z down there in the charlotte area definitely all snow there of course here is that uh, coastal low moving off the uh outer banks Probably some water spouts well out over the open uh, Gulf Stream there in the warm sector of this system. Still snow and uh, some pretty decent snow here across north central North Carolina up into far southern Virginia. Not quite up to uh, up to the uh, rich Richmond area there in uh, southeastern Virginia. But again, we can go back to the snow map here. That is the three kilometer NAM. Shows a pretty healthy stripe of snow across north central North Carolina as well. Uh, keeps those totals, though, just a couple of inches down into Charlotte on the back side of this system. The confidence is very low in this band to the east of the mountains, but the confidence is pretty high in these totals. Asheville west over to the uh, Tennessee North Carolina border. A lot of times these events will overperform out here in the mountains, even all the way down into the mountains of northeastern Georgia. So my plan is uh, tonight at about 8 p.m. I'm going to head north up toward Asheville and then position up near uh, the uh, Tennessee-North Carolina border near the higher terrain up there. Work that area uh, for snowfall uh, through tomorrow morning. Work the area uh, as well tomorrow morning down toward Pretty Place, South Carolina. Show you some of that beautiful scenery out there with the winter weather, the snow coating the mountains. Let's look at the HRRR now as well. Latest... Uh, 
do the 12 Z H triple R, I guess. And here is the H triple R in terms of snowfall. And it brings the snowfall all the way down to my mom's place as well, closer to the North Carolina, South Carolina border. The H triple R even has some double digit snowfall totals to the east of Asheville over the foothills. Uh, has a good three to four inches falling in Charlotte with that cold air changing things over to snow. Probably a little bit earlier here on the H triple R. That certainly could happen as this coastal low gets going just off the North Carolina Outer Banks. It's going to pull a lot of cold air down just to the east of the Appalachians. Sometimes those cold air events can surge southward a lot faster, almost behaving like a gravity wave trapped uh, by the Appalachians there. So I wouldn't be surprised if you do change over to snow a little earlier in the afternoon than many of the models are showing. Many of the models are showing about 3 or 4 p.m. with that changeover, but... With such a quick-moving, relatively modest surface low out there, I don't think that warm nose is going to be as big of a factor as people think. And I think you could easily get two to three inches of snow down there in the uh, Charlotte area. I wouldn't believe that many of these holes out here, too. I could definitely see Asheville getting a bit more than three to five inches, especially in those eastern and southern-facing slopes. Likely some more graphic enhancement out here just to the east of Asheville as well, out near the Lake Lure area uh, between uh, Asheville and uh, the Charlotte uh, area out there, but you could definitely see the mountains get hammered there according to the 12Z HRRR. Looking at the regular NAM, it definitely blossoms the snowfall totals on the other side of the Appalachians out there across eastern Tennessee. Probably not quite the resolution to really resolve this mountain chain, uh, but still you can see that it has quite a bit of snowfall, six, seven inches there, all the way down to the North Carolina, South Carolina border, that higher terrain, the mountains there right near the border, uh, just outside of Hendersonville, North Carolina, could certainly get hammered as well. Hendersonville is included uh, in that winter storm warning. Yeah, the NAM definitely blows up that snow across central Tennessee, which is definitely not supported uh, by the other models, including the uh, three-kilometer NAM. But the three-kilometer NAM does have that snow manifesting there, even on the western side of the Appalachians and eastern Tennessee there as well, but definitely doesn't have that signal in central Tennessee that the regular NAM has. And the NAM also blows up those snowfall totals in far northeastern Tennessee, Johnson City area, but... Really, on the, this is more of a uh, eastern slopes of the Appalachians type of an event where you get aided by that orographic enhancement. GFS also seems to have that signal just to the east of Asheville in the uh, foothills here of the southern Appalachians of a maximum, a bullseye there in snowfall. So my plan is definitely to get the bullseye of this event. I do want to see why the uh, NAM has that big time snowfall and why it differs from the uh, three kilometer NAM like that. Here you can see the Vortmax. So really not a lot of differences between the regular NAM and the three kilometer NAM, at least through, yeah, through tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, it has that vort over northern Georgia. Coastal low formation off Cape Fear. Three kilometer NAM. Three kilometer NAM does have a bit more rapid cyclogenesis there off of uh, Cape Fear with the coastal low. Here's the GFS with a slightly weaker, less compact upper level system. Probably why it has a re reduction in the snowfall totals there over the mountains and it also can't resolve the southern Appalachians as well. But boy, look at the uh, H triple R with a relatively weak Vort Max. It seems like the H triple R is a little bit off in uh, its evolution, a bit of an outlier in the evolution of the upper system, having more of a weaker, broad Vort, whereas the three kilometer NAM has a deeper upper level system, some lower heights.
lot of upslope here, kind of a conveyor belt in the easterlies at 850. That's why a lot of the, you get that orographic enhancement even through 12Z tomorrow morning, getting fed right up the mountains here. That's why the eastern facing slopes are going to probably overperform with this event. It seems like a very small scale feature to this conveyor belt of moisture feeding into this system. So I would probably believe the uh, smaller scale models. You can see that the HRRR with the weaker upper level system has kind of a weaker conveyor belt there. And with that uh, three kilometer NAM, you would definitely have a, a more stout warm nose into the Charlotte area. Deeper upper level system, a more stout conveyor belt there of uh, heat and moisture. The warm nose will be a little bit more stout there in Charlotte. Greater snowfall totals here across the eastern slopes of the Appalachians with this stronger, deeper upper level low. And I think this seems to be more accurate. The HRRR kind of washes out that upper system a little bit erroneously. So I definitely believe in this deeper, more bulbous upper level system. And then that uh, more stout conveyor belt, probably just one to two inches of snow, maybe an inch there in Charlotte after the changeover, maybe a 3 to 4 p.m. type of a changeover there. But a lot of snow hammering Asheville. And I think you could probably include that winter storm warning even just on the South Carolina side of the border, that higher terrain out near Cleveland, South Carolina. I 12Z tomorrow morning. Here is that sounding right near the North Carolina, South Carolina border. Quite a bit of lift at 500 millibars. Some decent moisture up there as well. Uh, that would definitely support the growth of those dendrites by this time. And you can see the uh, warm nose doesn't quite make it all the way above freezing. Stays just below freezing. So definitely a snow sounding there near the North Carolina, South Carolina border at least by 7 a.m. tomorrow. Really, with that upper level system lagging back behind, that's where all of that snow is from. And that snow moves through tomorrow morning, through the afternoon, through the southern Appalachians as well. Look at that. So it does look like Greenville is going to get a period of snow as well. Quite a bit of lift at 500 where those dendrites, those big snowflakes form. A lot of moisture as well in the middle levels of the atmosphere. So that's my game plan then is to try to intercept this storm across the southern Appalachians, the mountains there of uh, western North Carolina, upstate South Carolina, right near the border, maybe to the west of uh, Asheville, North Carolina as well. And again, my plan is to head out this evening and chase this event through the night tonight, through uh, tomorrow morning. But thank you guys for tuning in uh, to this report. I'm going to go live again uh, from the field uh, through this evening. Uh, but anyway, this is just kind of my rough breakdown of the models and the timing of that precipitation and the snowfall amounts. Uh, just a little bit of a quick uh, briefing here. But I'm going to be heading out this evening, going live to cover this winter weather event. Thank you guys for tuning into my weather reports. I'll be covering this event tonight through tomorrow morning. Never stop chasing.